Welcome back to our homestead, welcome back to our garden. We're talking about something very important today, especially in today's day and age, and that is healing and medicinal plants. Let's get going. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Now we have a lot of what I'm going to talk about today planted in our garden. And we were very diligent to do that in the few years that we've lived here because I know how important they are. And that's because I know the value of them and a lot of them do help our family out with certain sicknesses. And some of these are even used by modern pharmaceutical companies for modern medicines. A lot of people don't realize that. We did some research on the University of Rochester Medical Center and it lists those healing herbs that modern medicine uses. And one you're probably really familiar with we don't have here on our homestead is eucalyptus. So let's go through what we have here in our garden first and then at the end of the video we're going to talk about one really big one that I know almost all of you have planted on your property or have ready access to. It's really important to hear this one. You're going to be surprised. Now the first one we are going to start with is rosemary. And rosemary is a powerful antioxidant. It contains oleanic acid, which is a proven antiviral. This is a really great plant to have. Not only if you're doing a lot of cooking, but the oils from it are really powerful for healing. And it just smells amazing. Now something I didn't mention before is most of these herbs are perennials. So it's plant once and reaped the benefits for a long period of time. But you need to be careful because things like this marjoram will take over your garden. You can see I started from a plant this big just a few years ago and it looks like a carpet in this garden bed. So be careful and plant them strategically. Now let's talk about this marjoram behind me. It is a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's also antimicrobial and a good antioxidant as well. And I personally love marjoram to eat in my Italian cooking. Now make sure you stick around on our channel because we are going to talk about in the near future how to make these herbs into tinctures, which is a great way to make an old fashioned type of medicine from these herbs and other plants on your property. Now let's talk about another important herb and that is thyme. Now the thyme that I had here in the garden didn't last more than two years. It was probably my fault or where I planted it. We have purchased a brand new thyme and that's in the greenhouse and we will be planting that hopefully soon here in the garden. So thyme is in the mint family and it does a lot of different things. It's very antibacterial, which is awesome. But here's a cool thing. It also lowers blood pressure. So that could be very helpful for a lot of you. So it's also a powerful immune booster, but even better, it brings respiratory relief. So if you're very congested, you can make it into a tea to gain a lot of relief from that congestion. Also toward the end of the video, for my Christian friends and anybody else who's interested, we are going to talk about a list of healing herbs and plants that are from the Bible. So stay watching if you want to hear about that. So here's another one, lemon balm. This has actually very powerful antiviral properties. Now here's one that probably everybody loves and it grows as a volunteer in my garden and this is basil. Now some basils are annuals and some are perennials. We've never had a problem growing basil and it seems like a perennial because it always comes up every year. And I don't know that if that's because it's dropping seeds and coming up as an annual or not, but it's hard actually to get rid of basil in your garden. But more importantly, basil contains epigenin and ursolic acid. I think I'm saying those right, but both of those are very, very powerful antivirals. So I know a lot of these just sound like common herbs you can find at the grocery store, which you can, but don't discount them because they are very, very healthy and nutritious in a lot of different ways. Now make sure if there's just one thing that you can plant in your garden, it's this, garlic. And that's because garlic is one of the most potent antivirals that's available, that's out there. And it is amazing at lowering blood pressure and a host of other things. It actually stimulates an immune response in your cells. So it is very, very, very medicinal, very healing. And all of us should have it in our diets. 
And not only that, you can use it topically to treat warts, to treat other skin type rashes and diseases and things like that. Careful, it's pretty powerful, but it absolutely works. We use it here in our house. So right behind me is this little plant that everybody thinks is a weed. It is not. The dandelion is a really, really powerful and useful plant, and everybody needs to keep them around on their property. Let them grow wild wherever they want because they are valuable. The properties in this little plant right here will inhibit viral replication. So if you're taking any part of this plant and you're sick, it's gonna help stop whatever's happening in your body. And I know for a fact that it works because my wife drinks dandelion root tea made from these dandelions and it has completely reversed her gallbladder issues. It helps with liver function. It helps with blood sugar management. And it also helps clear up your bile. The beautiful thing is that you can eat the flower, you can eat the leaves, and you can eat the roots. The only thing you really don't eat on this plant is the stem. The flowers can make a beautiful, sweet dandelion jelly. The roots, we roast and dry and roast and grind it up into a tea or coffee. And the leaves can you be eaten just like a salad, although they're pretty bitter. Whatever you do, do not kill these beautiful little plants. So if you didn't know, I'm always looking for ways to improve these videos for you. And that includes building my knowledge in video creation, editing, Photoshop, and other areas. If you didn't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes to help you acquire and learn new creative skills. Right now, I'm taking a class called Cinematography Basics by Zach Mulligan. My goal is to improve how our videos look so I can better visually communicate our story or the project. I am excited to continue learning and discovering new skills that I can utilize to grow the channel and present better information for you guys. To help you make 2022 a year of new learning and growth, the first thousand people to use the link in my description box or my code, Country Living Experience, a homesteading journey, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. After that, they offer an annual membership for less than 10 bucks a month. Head below, click the link in the video description to start exploring today. Now, let's get back to the honey. Now, a very powerful family of medicinal plants are called Sambucas. And this is a common one everybody grows. This is elderberry. We did an entire video on elderberry, including the healing properties of it and how to plant it. If you're interested in that video, click at the top of the screen. So Sambucas, especially elderberry, does a great job at suppressing viral replication. And it brings amazing relief for upper respiratory problems. So if you've got a chest cold, this is one of the best things you can take for it. And it's also a powerful antioxidant. Now let's go talk about another one that's probably the most popular for respiratory problems. And that is peppermint. Peppermint, if you didn't know, contains menthol, which really helps clear up your sinuses. Everybody takes it in some form or another, but peppermint is the natural source or one of the natural sources for that. And just like rosemary, it contains rosemaranic acid, which has powerful anti-inflammatory properties and is antiviral. That's a new mint that we bought. We've got some chocolate mint here in the garden. That one's a peppermint. And we've got that mint in here with our medicinal flowers. And one of the most popular medicinal flowers is echinacea. You can find it in some stores and it's called coneflower, but it's the same thing, it's echinacea. Now, just like the dandelion, you can use the flowers and the leaves and the roots of the echinacea or coneflower. And it contains what's called E. purpurea, which is very, very antiviral and immune boosting. So you always hear these combinations of echinacea, zinc, and vitamin C. Well, there's your echinacea, and it's a really great thing to have in your garden. So before I dive into that last really important one and the few that I don't have in my garden, we are going to talk about the ones that are contained in the Bible. Now the ones that I do have in my garden are the thymes, mints, and onions and garlics, leeks. 
those are all mentioned in the Bible. But some of those that I don't have are coriander or cilantro, and I will be planting that soon, dill, cumin, hyssop, frankincense, mustards, myrrh, and sorrel. Now, a lot of those I can grow here on the property. I just haven't had the time to get them all in yet. Okay, let's talk about that big one. You are going to be surprised. Here you go, are you ready? It's pine needles. It's an antioxidant. It is anti-mutagenic, and it has very powerful positive effects on tumors. It cleans free radicals out of your body. And it is extremely high in vitamin C. How high? Well, actually, five times higher than a lemon. And it is very high in vitamin A, which is used in red blood cell production. Just like mint and elderberry in time, it is an expectorant. So it's very good at helping you with an upper respiratory infection and clearing that mucus out of your chest. And at the same time, it helps soothe sore throats. Now be careful when you're picking your pine needles. The best pine tree for this is a white pine. This one happens to be a ponderosa pine, which is really good. You can also use spruce, but it's best to stick with the long needle trees. Now I want you to be very careful because you do not want to do the same process or take uh, the needles from a cypress or a yew tree. Those can be toxic. And the best way to use this is actually fresh crush it up, break it up, and put it in some hot water, make a tea out of it. But we will also be making a tincture with this as well in the future. Now, another additional property besides cerumen in this is called shikimic acid. That has antimicrobial, antithrombotic, and anticoagulant properties. So I dare say that this might be the most powerful medicine on your property that you did not know about. Now there are many, many more that we can talk about. Ginger, ginseng, fennel, a whole bunch of others. Some uh, wild ones that are out there. This is what we have on our property. It's a pretty good list to start with for anybody. And if you're starting with a pine tree and some garlic, you are in really good shape. We could also talk about cayenne pepper, which we have grown here in the past. These are just regular peppers. And cayenne pepper is amazing at helping to stop heart attacks, actually, and uh, bringing blood to areas which need to be healed. And then other things like broadly plantain, which we actually just found this year on our property, that are pain relievers, and they work really well. I may make a part two to this video because there are so many out there that are very beneficial and helpful for everybody. But if I kept talking on this video, I'd get too many complaints. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for us in the comment section below. Now go click on this video right here, which talks about our top six survival crops to grow on your homestead. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.